So hello to Edinburgh, uh, to Martin Davidson. Um, nice to speak to you and uh, via Skype in Corona times as we all do. Um, yes. Do you feel like this at the moment? <laughs> well, um, I certainly feel washing your hands has never been so important. And I um, was shocked to discover early on how bad I was at doing it after seeing a video that, that explained the five different things you need to do with your hands for them to be clean. And I thought, oh, I, I was very chastened to think that's 50 years of my life spent washing my hands wrong. So I'm glad to have learned, learned that. But uh, otherwise, no, we're... We're all calm. I, mean, I think there's no point being um, hysterical. Um, the Queen has mentioned uh, her first speech to the nation in 1940. Apart from that being uh, merely 80 years ago, which is mind-blowing, one is struck by the reference uh, to the war. Nothing a German would do, of course, but uh, uh, what is the deeper message of it? Well, it was a very particular allusion that she made. She talked very much the the the, the, the referencing that first radio broadcast had a very specific message, which was she was remembering that the fact that that first broadcast was addressed to the children of Britain who had been evacuated. So it wasn't actually it was subtler than being a kind of very typical british oh, sorry knee jerk reaction to 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 a crisis to invoke the war it was subtler than that it was an an acknowledgement that as the children of britain and then later in all the countries in the war had to my my german mother was evacuated as well um uh, uh, during the war that 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 the the real responsibility a country had was to make sure everybody was safe. And that was a time of great fear and great sacrifice. And for a lot of people of that generation, uh, my wife's father, my father-in-law, uh, he was evacuated as a child and was traumatized by it, whereas, whereas her mother was um, evacuated and had the best time of her life, actually went to a place near where you were in Britain, in, in Leicestershire. And um, um, uh, so it was It was a subtle, the, the Queen's message was actually much, she's, she's a subtle uh, rhetorician. It wasn't jingoism to have done that to the war. It was very carefully judged reference to the experience of children in 1940 being a, 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 a mirror image of the kind of panic and drastic measures that is are now universal uh, also a lot of confusion uh, a lot of consternation a lot of dejection that uh, what these drastic measures have required so i thought she was she was really impressive and and an attempt to read jingoism out of it as some of the british right wing papers tried to do felt wrong um, but the, 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 the illusion was very particularly to the children of 1940. It wasn't to Britain at war as such. Uh, the same day that she made her speech, her prime minister was rushed to St. Thomas Hospital. What did you think when you heard that? I, 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 I mean, it was at one level not remotely surprising, given that he had been... Uh, uh, you know, he had taken a position. It's, it's. I mean, the politics of shutdown, the politics of keeping your distance, are complicated. And part, it, it did seem like, it did seem like um, karma that somebody who had been so casual and cavalier and 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 tried to make a British virtue out of ignoring all of that, that talk about keeping your distance. You know, there was something he flouted that very conspicuously and he, he he gave it a very boris johnson british spin which is this is what makes you know british people don't don't you know uh, they're hard to intimidate into taking these things too seriously his phrase was take it on the chin which is a very much another another phrase from the vocabulary of uh, keep calm and wash your hands it's 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 almost a it's almost a i mean that's actually also a 1940s uh, uh, you know back reference and and your first reaction was wow that's a chicken coming home to roost you know you really shouldn't have been doing that the people advising you not to behave like that were not just your political antagonists trying to get a rise out of you you know there is medical science behind this it's not very mysterious the fact that viruses travel by proximity between people this is not very difficult 
Um, but there was something nevertheless quite shocking and uh, 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 but at the same time also a little mysterious. The 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 uh, the, the, there was a blanket drawn over details. Uh, we were never, there was a whole week of uncertainty as how ill is he? Um, why aren't we being told? And that then obviously created a space in which kind of rather stupid conspiracy theories have started to circulate that it was all a PR stunt, that he wasn't actually that ill. That seems incredibly unlikely. I don't believe that. Um, but they, they, they had to play it. It, 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 it also then spoke to a narrative of how does he get these preferential tests? Uh, 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 and then, of course, when he was in hospital in the intensive care unit, the ICU, it created a huge piece of political theater, which is this is the very NHS your government has been explicitly undermining and attacking and defunding for 10 years. Um, the, the very nurses and doctors who are helping you are precisely the people that your Home Secretary have, has declared fall below the £25,000 a year salary cap, which is the difference between skilled and unskilled labour, aka we don't want them anymore. And thirdly, they're the very people who come from all the other parts of the world who are migrants. And, 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 and I think we were very very struck by his speech he gave a he gave a video on on leaving hospital and i have to say i was impressed it was he looked chastened i mean obviously it had been pr'd to within an inch of its life but it's still read it came over sincere also humbled and shocked by what it was as an experience to to face up to confront covid 19 very up close and personal I thought it wasn't bombastic, it wasn't bullshitty, it wasn't flippant, which are his key sort of, those are his, those are the notes he likes to strike. And very, very politically interesting to nominate, to name his doctors. He had a good joke, all my doctors seem to be called Nick, uh, which is a very British name. I mean, we would all smile at that, that's a funny joke. Uh, but in particular, drawing attention to two nurses, one from New Zealand, one from Portugal. And you thought, mm, that's, that's really interesting. And our feeling was that's a very interesting hostage to fortune, because that's going to be difficult to walk back when Priti Patel, our Home Secretary, starts again with her rhetoric of who we want and who we don't want in this country, which was the driving force of Brexit. Speaking it's, of, it's, sorry, speaking of Brexit, uh, do you think that Corona is uh, now deepening the rift in Great Britain, or is it uh, yes. is it uh, building a bridge between well, the two? Fascinating. I, it, it, do you know what is doing both? I mean, I, I, I think it's a very interesting thing, which is it's a universal experience, uh, uh, but it is being interpreted very, very aggressively along cultural war um, uh, front line. It is, it is, a, it is, a, 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 I mean, particularly in the media and social media, you know, the national media and the social media in particular, as you would not be surprised to discover. Uh, the culture war, the, the moment was a very specific one for Britain. So Boris Johnson was riding high on two huge triumphs. A general triumph as being the person that delivered Brexit after three years of sabotage and backsliding and the British establishment, particularly the left, doing all they could to deliver an undemocratic reversal of Brexit. And then he had the huge personal triumph on top of that of winning the general election. And wiping the floor with Jeremy Corbyn. And that was a huge, uh, triumphalist, jingoistic moment for his supporters who had ne who had been, first of all, collectively uh, uh, enthralled by the, by the final triumph of Brexit, but on top of that, the personal victory of the man who delivered it. And then Brexit, and then um, Corona, you know, COVID-19, the disease hits us. And that that has carried on in uh, 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 colouring the way in which we have discussed it as a country. So even today, you will find people discussing how long the lockdown is to be sustained. It's now primarily seen as a battle against the mainstream media, who are seen to be the champions of an endless lockdown 
because that's what they do. They're perverse and it, it, it suits a left wing agenda and uh, uh, has already then now been politicized. And it's, it's, it's politicized in the sense not of the Financial Times or, or the great economists who are delivering really terrifying pictures of what the cost is for an economic lockdown. This is not without price. But it's being politicised in the sense that if you want the lockdown to continue, you only want to do it to embarrass Boris Johnson and to undermine him. And conversely, if you want the lockdown to be sensibly uh, uh, reversed and arrested and suspended, which his cohort of supporters do want, you're doing that to get slightly get Boris Johnson off you know, get the heat off him because he was so late in implementing it. So if you end it early, there's a sort of symmetry there. So I would say there is a definite sense in which the polar, the I mean, you've just, I mean, we're not as polarized as America because we don't have guns and we don't have evangel evangelical religion, but we are very, very polarized in Britain. And the, 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 uh, the sad thing is um, at the moment, it could go one of two ways, either this COVID-19 thing will draw people together or it will further entrench those differences. And at the moment, the difference is, uh, I mean, every part of the COVID-19 narrative is given a wider context. So there's a Brexit dimension to it. There's a, every day there's an, an endless, if you're on the right, the press and the right, kind of gleeful sense that COVID-19 is going to kill the EU. There's a real sense in which people are pointing to Italy and the Eurozone as further evidence that they were right all along and that Europe is unsustainable, EU is unsustainable versus, uh, 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 you know, the, 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 the other backlash against that is endless comparisons to Germany, to the timeline. The, the, I mean, it's fascinating that, that Germany and Britain were a day apart in detecting the first cases. And the timeline, I mean, is calamitous when you compare the British shambolic timeline compared to the German. And, and, and the way that that's rationalized in Britain is if you're on, if you're a remainery type person, you will go yet more evidence of the price we have paid because we have had nothing but ideology politics. The price we have paid, we have paid it, we have abandoned the boring job of politics, which is management. We've, we've, we, because it's all far too heated and febrile for that. And, 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 and but as if you're on the right, the narrative there is, well, Britain, there's an exceptionalism thing here. Britain steers a course between France on the one hand with its, you know, look how France and Spain are accused of being authoritarian countries. It took one bit of health crisis and they revealed their true colours. And Germany, on the other hand, is revealed to be in that imagination, to be the over-bureaucratised country that is still rightly atoning for the war. So obviously it has to, it has to, it has to uh, uh, operate the way, the way it did. But for most of us, it's quite shocking to see the difference between the price we pay in Britain for a polarised politics where loyalty and point scoring counts for more than management. Now, and you, now you live, live in Edinburgh and there's another dimension to it uh, that's Scotland. How do the you as someone who lives in Scotland uh, perceive the uh, politics in Great Britain? How London uh, handles the crisis? Uh, it, it's it's interesting. There was a story only today that it had been apparently it was um, that the 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 shortage in personal protective equipment for doctors and and people in hospitals that uh, a shipment had arrived and. Uh, a, a priority was being given to English hospitals, not Scotland. And I saw there was an attempt to whip that up into yet more reason why Scotland has to detach itself from the United Kingdom. I think in terms of the experience, it does feel pan-British. It doesn't feel th 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 any, any, anywhere. In fact, I mean, things are calmer in Scotland than in England. We're a smaller country. The population is less dense. There are cases here, but it's 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 in proportion to, to our population. But also we have in our political leadership, um, um, unless you're a very anti-Scottish nationalist person, Nicola Sturgeon is a more impressive figure than Boris Johnson to people who don't absolutely idolize his brand of very public school British bravado, which is, which is, a, 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 it, it, it doesn't travel well, that, that type of humor. We're all very used to it. It's, we're imbued in that, that kind of joshing, uh, uh, irreverent, uh, uh, kind of 
very public school way 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 of talking. We we Britain is full of those people. And Scotland doesn't like that. It's not doesn't travel well up here. And Nicola Sturgeon is a much more pragmatic, or she's capable of appearing much more pragmatic. So I I I, I would say I would I, I I would say at the moment it hasn't it hasn't yet to me obviously either helped or hindered the debate about Scottish independence, but that will that will come. The real ticking clock with all of the, I mean, apart from all the obvious horrendous, how many people is this thing going to kill before we're on top of it? Beyond that ticking clock, there is the very real question of what the hell happens to the British economy when we then have to factor Brexit on top of it? Um, and every single reserve has gone, and also, you know, we've we've all noticed. So we were all told through the Brexit process, oh, a six percent drop in the economy is a small price to pay. Turns out it wasn't. It turns out the moment we all got a taste of no loo rolls, no toilet rolls in the supermarkets, and everyone went haywire. So so there is a there is a there is going to be a job of work to be done, and and I've noticed things have gone very quiet on that front. People are not you know quite rightly. We're all, you know, as we are across Europe, we're, 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 we're um, confronted with the day to day reality. And, you know, I noticed I don't know what's happening in Germany, but I noticed there was a very key transition watershed about 10 days ago when up to that point, the crisis was stockpiling. So the antisocial behavior was panic buying. I mean, most famously toilet paper, but hundreds of other things. And that stopped. And now it's everyone's now the Stasi twitching and monitoring how long people spend outside so what i notice is my local supermarket's full of toilet rolls but oh all- that's great we, we don't have uh, much right. well, that's, that's in germany great. if you can send, send something over i'll be glad because this is still oh, not we? very uh, well available here oh well that's, so that's the difference it. But but the curtains twitch every time you walk to the supermarket, so it's 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 the the the, the self monitoring, and 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 you know as in Germany too, it's it's put the spotlight on tremendous social inequalities. Uh, uh, you know, a, a lot. Of, I mean, I don't have access to a garden, but I live in a big house. I've got my two sons back here, but they've got a room each. I mean, I've got friends who've got three children in four room houses. And never mind, there was a big case, a park in southeast London called Brockwell Park was closed because it was so full of people. And he thought that's because every housing, the housing around Brockwell Park are tall, they're they're tower blocks of people from very low income, usually uh, black and uh, multi-ethnic population, diverse population who are by far the worst hit with the virus, which is, again, statistics that are not really making the impact that they should. And you just thought this is such a... And they locked the park. And you're thinking, well, it's fine if you're... You know, the, the Guardian reading majority of people, uh, middle-class professional people in Britain, you you know, are more likely to have access to a garden than people living around Brockwell Park. So it's, it's, it's definitely highlighted social inequalities, I wonder if one of the consequences will be that there will be a complete recalibration about who we value in society. There's a there's a big sense of that going on. So, you know, that the the shocking realization that the world without the quote unskilled, wow, the world really ground to a halt without them, whereas all the hedge fund managers and the media celebrities, who needs them? And I I I, I wonder if that legacy will last. Uh, last some personal questions. What do you miss most when you think of the Corona crisis? I I miss it. The, 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 the cruelty was Scotland's weather is bad enough, but it's throwing an absolutely beautiful spring at us. And I I I I I'm just feeling very uh, very housebound. I feel particularly sorry though. I'm I'm you know I work from home anyway. It wasn't such a wrench for me. But my two sons are both doing university final exams at home, and I I really feel I really feel for them. It's 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 not just because they've had their summers rest away from them, but you know their their next ten years, their futures. How is this economy? It was struggling to find that age group jobs anyway. What on earth they face? I I, I feel uh, very sorry. I was very lucky 
five days before the lockdown, I went, my wife and I had uh, had had a week on the Scottish Hebridean island of Isla, where all the whiskey comes from. And I bought six bottles of really good malt from different distilleries. And we came back just in time. Two days afterwards, they cancelled the ferries. And the one good thing, the one piece of feeling a very wise virgin is I've got six bottles of very, very nice malt. I've kept one behind which I'm keeping back for when my friends, we can all meet and then I'll throw away the cork. But uh, until then, uh, we're, we're, we're eking that out as long as we can. Is there something which you have already learned from the crisis? I, 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 that's a really, it's uh, a really good, that's a really good question. At the moment, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm terrified of getting it, and I think it did make me realise both my wife and I were thinking oh, we're not as healthy as we should be. I mean, part of the big mistake with the British approach, this idea of herd immunity, was twofold. One, they didn't peer review it. Uh, only one doctor said it was a good idea. It clearly isn't. Secondly, it only works if you're vaccinated. There is no such thing as herd immunity without it. But the but the third thing was it, it assumed that we were all looking after our health. That you know, it's only 80 year olds who have underlying health conditions. And I think what's what's what shocked my wife and me both was we were thinking, oh, we've we really need to we have a responsibility just to be to be to be healthier because i you know the terrible realization that um i'm now borderline that group of people they now put a question mark over and i'd always in my mind say, oh i don't belong to that group i'm i'm the most important but i'd be at the top of the list for health priorities now you realize you're so not the scorecard is are you overweight well tragically yes um i'm asthmatic um tick um are you fit oh not really um so i i, I i've been quite uh, uh, sobered by that and in a more metaphysical way sobered by realizing this is not the last one though you know the, i had by coincidence just finished reading a really fantastic incredibly powerful book called the pandemic century which was a history of the 20th century and that went all the way from um uh, 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 spanish flu through parrot flu i mean parrot fever which was a huge thing in america in the 30s killed tens of thousands of people um, um all the way through and by the end of it he's saying the author there was saying that you know that the pandemic that will kill us is the one with 40 percent mortality not one percent and uh, uh where person person to person transmission is not stopped by a bar of soap so i've 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 i i i think um um uh, mortality i think i've definitely i've got an 82 year old mother and suddenly yeah. Yeah. my sister and i thinking what the hell do we do when she gets it i mean no idea um so so m m mortality but so far um all the people i know who've had it have recovered okay is there something like a positive aspect to the crisis? It's hard to ask after that uh, what you said, but uh, uh, I'm trying to think positive. What is your? What are you making of it? I, I think there's definitely a potential positive side to all of this, and I think it gave us all in our different corners of the world a very close look at two things. One is who we really were. Because I think what a crisis like this does is it really exposes who 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 your leaders are, but it also exposes your own values. And I think I came away, I've come away from this, you know. But then I have the luxury of I I I'm a, I live a comfortable middle class existence. I absolutely acknowledge that. But I think I've come away from it very ready now to have a conversation with people about there are things that are more important than just not just economic growth, but financial world economic growth, which is just casino nonsense money, which destroyed the world in 2008 and, and, and is, you know, is, is, is being catered to once again now. And I, 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 I think it's, it's definitely made me, uh, and I think it will, a lot of people will fundamentally properly rethink how we're all supposed to live our lives and what a good life is. Never mind the environmental part of it all. I mean, you just you just think, um, and I, I don't mean you know it, just at the level of food politics. You look at those wet mar China, the bio hazard of those markets, and then you think, well, the Western equivalent as the 
appalling abuse of antibiotics in Western factory farms, which has a different kind of health nightmare being being loaded into it. And I think those questions have now become real and personal, and they're not just weapons in the culture war, which I think six months ago they were. Um, do you have something like uh, what Germans call angst? Fear. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, the, 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 there's a British phrase for that where you catastrophize. You, 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 you seize on. I mean, I'm quite a, uh, an optimistic, cheerful person and my wife isn't. She's a complete um, um, doom monger. And, and so that means I have to ration myself. I, I cannot go around thinking, oh, my God, can you imagine if it did X or Y? But I, 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 I do have fear. I have fear for myself. Um, I would really not, I, 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 I recognize, you know, overweight men my age are a bad group of people to get this thing and I don't want to, to get it. But I think larger than that, I have the economic fear of, although I, I said at the level of social attitudes, there's a lot of good that might come out of a big recalibration of what we think is important. But I am very, very scared for my kids the 20 year olds what they get to do in the next 10 years i i, I hope we 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 you know the the, the world does uh, um 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 and um, bounce back and at the moment i just think we were if we get through this i'm not going to say unscathed because it's clearly the you know in in in, in britain britain is set to become the biggest have the highest number of casualties in Europe and we're already underrepresented by 40% because we don't include old age people's homes because we've made this distinction people who die of COVID-19 versus people who die with COVID-19 as though there's a huge difference um, and I, 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 am, I am fearful and Again, metaphysically, I'm fearful for the next time and I only hope one of the things we learn is we 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 reprioritize how we equip our hospitals so that the next time something like this has happens all you do is press a button but uh, 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 yes there's definitely a bit of angst yes um, well if you think of the changes that will that this crisis will bring about uh, what do you think will be the effect on the world how will the crisis change the world as a whole I, 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 I think in the in well, I think there's a number of key questions that countries are going to ask. I do think that geopolitically, the over reliance on China uh, and the the globalization that stems from that, and the cheap availability of cheap goods on on uh, because of that, I think will definitely change. I think we have to look at a world in which 90% of our drugs and 99% of our medical equipment comes from China. Uh, is is absolutely uh, is absolutely uh, crazy. Um, I, I I don't think now is the moment to get into a huge debate um, about, about about whether you call it the Chinese virus or not. But I do think I do think the role that uh, China has played both both as a petri dish from which this thing this pathogen was 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 created. But secondly, that four or five weeks of And I remember somebody said to me that the, the real analogy in history is not the Battle of Britain or World War II. The real analogy is Chernobyl. And it, 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 it has the same profile, which is a regime uh, 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 that, that, that whose first reflex is to put the lid on a, a self-created disaster um, and then penalize and punish. If not, and those doctors who vanished, who tried to work as whistleblowers. I mean, that's genuinely uh, t terrifying. And then the third part of the Chernobyl thing is you you hold up as personal heroes, those people who have sacrificed themselves on the front line on all our behalf. And you think, why did they need to do it? If they'd had protective clothing, they wouldn't have needed to. So I think I think economically, the world will definitely change. I, I hope I hope it doesn't fragment the world back to how it was before You know, uh, uh, I, 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 I did think great steps had been made by by travel. I mean, I, I, to me, a more joined up world was always in itself a good thing. I, I thought, I thought, uh, you know, the, the more we know about each other, the better. Um, but I do think, I do think economically, I think a lot of particularly big, the bigger economies are going to ask themselves the price we pay to be so relied, so reliant on, 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 uh, 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 on, on China. And not to punish China as being the country where the virus started, but simply, is this, does this make good sense? Um, the fact that all our, all our nations are, 
uh, uh, the supply lines of PPE and ventilators has been, has proved so uh, problematic is because the supply lines are so are so narrow and uh, um, culturally, I don't know. It's 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 it's. I I think the one thing in in our favour is it's been a universal experience. I think it's something that everyone you know. It's not an experience where they're, they're really obvious winners and losers. It's not like the Northern Hemisphere can wash its hands of the Southern Hemisphere or vice versa. Everyone's got this damn thing. Um, and I, 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 I think it will, it will, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it will shake people awake to the, the implications of that. So, so what I would hope is that we would have more emotional fellowship with the rest of the world because there is no such thing as a containable pandemic. By definition, they affect absolutely everyone, but maybe economically we could be more sensible about how we distribute our priorities and not rely on on, on one or two sources for things that are, are so vital. Well, that's a good uh, point and something good to end with. Uh, so if this is the first global crisis since World War II, maybe there are some steps which are as decisive as those who have been taken after World War II to learn yes. from such a crisis. And uh, thank you for that, Martin. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Good all health right. to you. Stay safe and yeah, all the best you. to you. And you. Cheers.